So this is one of my favorite techniques to do because you can do some really interesting pages and collage material with this technique. So this is the Citrus Solve National Geographic technique and I wanted to show you really quick some of the samples, uh, the results that you get with this technique. It really creates these really interesting textures and patterns and and modeling in the pages, which then make for some really cool collage material. Especially for your wabi-sabi piece, this already looks like weathered surfaces and um, is, is actually already wabi-sabi, so this is the perfect collage material for your pieces. So um, I just wanted to show you some samples and these are really cool because you see how the colors change and the fun part of this is that it's totally unexpected. You're not sure what you're going to get and um, also you don't know what you know what's going to happen on the back of the pages as well. Some of the back of the pages really end up interesting. So anyway I wanted to show you some samples and let's get started. Um, so you're first going to have your National Geographic magazine and I found that if you work with anything after the 90s, I think some of the 80s might work, um, any of the issues that are either from 80s on I find work well. I did play around with some that were in the 70s that were kind of cool but I think there was a um, an era where some of the inks did not work. So this technique really only works with National Ge Geographics. At least from what I know, it works really effectively with the way that they either print the inks on the pages. So I've tried it with different magazines and it doesn't quite have that same effect. So the first thing you want to do is you want to try to get past the ads. The ads t will not work with this effect because the ads are often coated with some sort of um, UV coating or gloss coating that, that actually gets in the way of dissolving the inks. So you really do want to get into the featured stories in the National Geographics. And I found the easiest way is just to start cutting the pages out because what you're going to do is you're going to actually sandwich these pages together so um, after you apply the citrus solve so you want to just be able to cut out a bunch of pages when you do this. Now the more pages the better because you're going to find that you just want to keep going and um, this is such a fun technique. You're going to want to make multiple pages. The great thing about some of these pages is the more ink uh, on the page, the better, versus if there was a lot of white space around that. Also, if you have like a, a, a full page spread, you can just fold that when we add the citrus salt. So that's what you want to do is first just go ahead and cut these pages out and I always look for you know like if this has some color in it I will go ahead and do that cut that out um, the more color the more interesting and then also like this one would be really cool once you add the citrus salt so once you have that those pages together you want to just kind of make sure to pair them up um, so what I'll do is actually just pair them up like this. This one already is folded so that I ha I'm ready to go once I get outside and start adding the citrus salt. So for example I need a, uh, another page for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and find it. Like I said um, you know, any white space, it, it might bleed into the white space, but you're really just going to have the effect wherever the color is. So you want to keep that in mind.
Okay, so I'm going to use that for this. And then uh, we're ready to go outside and start applying the citrus solve. Okay, so now I'm outside, and the reason why I'm doing this outside is because even though citrus solve is made from um, a natural essential oils, it's pretty strong, and you don't want to do this indoors. So make sure that you do this in the well-ventilated um, area or definitely outside. So I'm going to get these ready to go. And the reason why I'm wearing gloves is because I have sensitive skin. So if you have sensitive skin, you want to make sure that you're putting some sort of protection on your hands. Okay, and also you want to make sure whatever is to cover your surface and then make sure that you have some paper towel because this stuff really gets soaked in and it's oil and you just want to make sure that you have some sort of cover over your table. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually just start pouring this on here pretty generously and then I'm going to sandwich them together and make sure, and you don't have to be too meticulous about this because you're going to actually work fast. And then you want to, and actually because I like that cup, that particular image, I'm going to actually put a little bit on there and then sandwich another one on there. And then I might go ahead and put this aside and then pull some other ones to create. So you can do as many as you want. Now make sure that you don't poke a big hole in this bottle because it'll pour out quite away. So you want to make sure you have a little bit of a hole so you can control the amount. Also, this really works well in warmer weather. Um, I find that it works faster, but you don't want it too warm because then it'll dry. So the key is, is to not allow these pages to dry. And you can do as many as you want of these. So I'm going to actually use the inside. I'm going to set this one aside too. Use this inside. And this stuff smells good. It doesn't smell toxic at all. It just smells really orangey. Okay. All right. So then we're going to let this sit for a bit. And what you're going to do... Um, periodically, because you want to make sure this doesn't dry, is you want to check in between the pages to see if it's starting to dissolve. So it's starting to dissolve, but this is actually going to have to sit for a little bit longer. And you can also decide to add a little bit more if you want. So I'm going to actually let this sit and let the ink dissolve for a little bit longer, and then we'll come back and check it. Okay, it's been a few minutes, and uh, excuse the gardener outside um, in the background. Anyway, um, this actually took a little longer, so I set it out in the sun for about 10 to 15 minutes, um, which you might want to do. But what you want to do is make sure that it's just sticky enough, because that is when it starts to really dissolve the image and make sure that it doesn't dry completely because then you will not be able to get your pages apart. So, um, so this is kind of what you're going for. You want some of that stuff to start happening and then these guys will be a little wet. Um, so you're going to actually take them inside and dry them. 
so. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll even let this sit a little longer since it's still wet. But you can see that it's just starting to dissolve some of the image. And once this is dried, it's going to actually look really interesting. So you can do multiples of these and then make sure just to dry them before you start to use them to collage. So one of the things I wanted to show you is that the effect also relies on the image that you have. So like this one really had a lot more light tones in the image. So you, when that dries, this is really going to be a little bit more interesting because the National Geographic magazines tend to have a lot of black in it. So keep that in mind also when you're selecting your imagery. You want to make sure that you have enough lights in there. Also, um, here's an example too of lighter image that looks a little bit more interesting. But as these dry, they actually start really revealing that look. Okay, so let's go inside and, and thoroughly dry these and then take a closer look at them. Okay, so now that I have these sheets completely dried, I can actually take a look at what interesting things have kind of come from um, what's happened because once they're dried, they look totally different and you will actually start seeing more of the texture and the interesting formations that have happened. So I like, I don't even remember what this image was, um, but I like that this part I can use. It's kind of cool. And also, I think I showed this before, it's, it's this part I'll probably use. It's very cool. And you know, also, text can be interesting too. So this is kind of a, a happy accident. You're open to it just sort of spontaneously unfolding. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, I like when this occurs, this little bit of texture looks like stone, which kind of reminds me of weathered stone. Um, these, wow, these, this looks very, very different from what it started out as, but that's cool. And also remember, you're not using the whole thing. You're going to be tearing these for your wabi-sabi pieces and using them in terms of chunks and sections. This is interesting too. I might use this portion here. So that is just what you want to look for in terms of what you're, you know, in terms of when you're doing these pages. Also, you want to do multiple pages because you don't know what they're going to look like until you dry them. So it's just good to just bang out a lot of different pages. This will also give you a lot of collage material. So now you have another resource for your collage material that you will be applying to your wabi-sabi pieces.